Hello everyone and welcome to a special recorded episode of Total Justice Gaming. Uh, today it's myself and Joe uh, yep. talking with uh, Brad, the president of Level Brad Talton, president of Level Ninety Nine Games. Good to be um, back. Yep. How you doing? Doing good. Right. Today. Doing well. Doing well. Today we're going to be talking about his new product that's coming out soon, the Exceed Fighting System. We are holding up our boxes and they will dance around for you. Um, this mine won't. Mine's like me. It it doesn't dance. Mine dances. But anyways, what Exceed is, is it is how kind of like how Battlecon is a straight up board game, uh, that simulates a fighting game. This is a similar thing where it has a board that you lay out with cards, and you have a character that moves around, but instead you have your own set deck of cards that you that goes along with the character. So instead of it being their set styles and whatnot, you get a full deck. Um, for their first season of it, uh, they did partnered with Jasco Games uh, to do Red Horizon, which is their own in-house license uh, that has all these awesome characters. We've got Ulrich, we've got Ava, we've got Heidi with the giant robot, a uh, bunch of other characters. Ones that haven't come to UFS yet, some of them. And this is their crossover, and then there's also the Indies UFS set that they're putting out right now. Oh, so we did kind of a trade with our, our original original characters and such, yeah. um, which was which has been a lot of fun. It's uh it's it's had some ups and downs. It's it's interesting to coordinate with another company to do your release, um, and uh, it was interesting to be coordinated with for their release. That was uh it was a lot of fun on both sides, and uh, I'm really happy that the products are now coming out to the marketplace. Um, I know Indians UFS came out uh, this weekend, right? At, yep. uh, and you guys had the, uh, the was it the latest Pro Tour at, uh, at Las yeah. Vegas? Yeah, there's a special 2K event that's being at, that's doing a special pre-release, I believe actually tomorrow. And a lot of their stores, a lot of the local stores are either doing them today or they did them yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we were special and we were one of the first stores to do it on Friday. Awesome. Like, games on Friday. You, you're enjoying the set so far? I love the set. Um, it does lots of nice things for the game. Um, I'm actually probably just going to, for the next month or so, just take the decks and just smash them together like and make a constructed deck out of two copies of each. Uh, hmm. And just play with endings for a while. That that good, huh? <laughs> yep. Like I just I like them. The cards are very synergistic with each other. And I could do awesome things, like uh, Hikaru with his four abilities for each of the things. Uh, I can play with all the tokens from Battlecon to remind mm -hmm. me to use his abilities. But oh, yeah. That's, back I didn't think about that. Back to Exceed, though. <laughs> well, yeah, Exceed, we're here for today. Exceed is, um, is on a boat now, and it is going to be over here probably in about three to four weeks, depending on how the sailing goes. Um, but uh, we should be bringing it to Kickstarter backers and to stores early in June. Um, cool, just in time for my birthday. Yeah. We, no, we we're just bringing out we're just bringing out box one. So Reese, Heidi, Vincent, Natali is what you'll be able to get in stores next month. Perfect. And, the one that yeah. didn't get sent to me. Yeah, yeah. Behind. The other three will come out month by month afterwards. So Which, that makes sense. One in June, one July, one August, one September. It's our, we're trying to get like a, a monthly release schedule for this game and we'll do like four months and then we'll take a two month break and then we'll do four more months, take a two month break, do two seasons a year. And each season will be a different set of characters, a different license, a different style of card that, that we're putting together. I like that. So, I also saw, uh, for speaking of licensing and other stuff, I saw that you also, there was two promo sets mm -hmm. that you got with, uh. I cannot remember one of them. Summoner Wars, and I can't remember the other. One, one. is well, one is Mage Wars. Mage, Mage Wars. Wars. Yeah, Mage Wars Mage by Wars. Arcane Wonders. Yeah. The other is an original property that we are doing. It's a kind of like um, pop future uh, post singularity uh, property called Esper Cross, oh. and it's like a a nanotechnology sort of singularity future where humans cool. kind of live in this big. Uh, you know, computer controlled uh, utopian society. Um, but there's more stuff under the surface, and, uh, and they I, have to. 
Uh, this sounds yeah. similarly like to one of my favorite anime, so I want to look more into which one, this. Which one's that? Psychopaths. Oh, Psychopaths is great. It was certainly an inspiration. Certainly an yeah. inspiration. Psychopaths, Jet Grind Radio was also an inspiration for the style of it. Yeah, that's so it's got that's this very Jet Grind look to it. Um, and uh, and also Space Channel Five for a little bit of the uh, of that that style that stylistic um, you know pop future setting. Um, but yeah, Psychopaths is one of my favorite animes as well from from recent years. So so I've got to ask. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, over at Level 99 Games, you can go to the store, and you made mention of this uh, earlier that, uh, just a little bit ago, that you'll be releasing this in season ways, where you get a set every month. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way anybody can probably do this is actually head over there, and they got a great bundle. I purchased it myself. I'm guessing it's kind of like, and this is probably a dirty word in the community, but a season pass to exceed for $100. <laughs> It gets all four boxes and the playmat. It's a great deal. The boxes individually sell for twenty five, so you're getting you're basically getting the playmat for free. Yeah, yeah, twenty dollars, twenty dollars off. Um, and actually, the the real advantage of this is that you get the boxes, you get the bundle all at once when it comes out. It all ships. So in June, you'll get all four boxes, and then. Yeah. People who are buying it, you know, from the stores will be waiting, you know, over four months to get characters. You'll have all the characters right away. Yeah. So, so that'll be go that'll be. That, pretty cool. Go do that season pass. It's one of the only season passes you'll ever buy that's actually <laughs> worth it right up front. <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> and speaking of season passes, we will talk about the best horse armor ever, foils. This is my favorite part, actually, about all of Exceed. The awesome foiling that you did on it. Hopefully okay, people so, can see it. Uh, here's the thing that you need to remember, Matt. What? Uh, your camera's off for me and probably Dave. Yes. So we have no idea what you're holding up. That's true. I, I, I am that's holding really up good a foil, foil Ava. but I can't see it. I am holding up a foil, Ava. Okay. Uh, okay. I am holding it up for hopefully for the for the viewers to see. Because all we're seeing is a kitten going foils. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but... Like, it was a lot of fun to make the foils. This was actually my – this is the second time I've done foils. The first time I just foiled the entire face of the card, and it was kind of like blinding with, yeah. with bling. And that didn't go so well, so I decided – so this time I made – I did like spot foils. And Which I love. That's my yeah, favorite was, kind of I was foil really nervous it. about it, but they turned out so nice. And that, that like kind of metal interface on the, on the surrounding side of the, the card mm -hmm. worked really well with the foil. So I was very happy how it, uh, how it turned out. You should do more of these, because I could just sit there and look at these all day. Maybe I should just do the whole thing in foil next time. <laughs> then it's not quite as special, though. Yeah. It really it, it, like, is. Depending on the super, uh, on the ultras and the characters. Yeah, the, the ultra size. and the characters makes it really special. Yeah. Mm. You're like, oh, here's my awesome super foily card that didn't cost a thousand dollars. I mean, this is just going to be one of those games where you don't need max rarity value for a deck for this game to be. Yeah, fun everything's just set. show how impressive you are at this game. Yeah, well, we we're still considering some level of customization in the future. Like right now, we just have tag team as the only customization of mm -hmm. your deck, but we were considering doing something like you know, like badges or or simple equipment stuff that like you know, like maybe you can improve your focus with one more armor or something like that. You know, very simple, very simple sort of customization for the decks in uh, to like, mix up uh, tournament play a little bit. But yeah. for this season, I think we want to keep it straight up. Yeah. You get your thirty card deck. That's what you play. If you want a tag team, you can build team synergy that way. Okay. The other so. thing I want to talk about about the cards themselves before we get to the actual game, uh, is because a lot of people care about this. The card stock on these is really well done. I was talking to Brad about it before the show. Uh, they're really thick. They're the foiling doesn't seem to be curling that much at all. Drop the card. Um, I've had them in sleeves since I got them, but uh, the foiling doesn't seem to be curling up that badly, and they're all just very thick quality. That's very, it's very nice to shuffle. They yeah, remind we, me, and I hate dropping another card game for this, so you'll have to excuse me. Uh, they remind me of the cardstock they use in Buddy Fight. Where it's a very thick card stock, it doesn't bend, it doesn't bow very easily, and that's really good. This thing means these things you can uh, stick out in the car for your weekend stuff. You can travel long distances and you don't have to worry about the card bowing at all, regardless of what sleeve it's in. 
we, 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 we went the extra mile. We, we spent extra to make sure that they, we got, you know, like good, good quality stock and, uh, and an extra, an extra heavy core in the center of these so that they would be good for repeated shuffles. Like with BattleCon, you don't have to shuffle a lot, but with this game, you do shuffle your deck every time you play, probably twice every time you play. And so we wanted to make sure that we would have a, you know, a stock that would hold up to that and would keep the game in good condition. Um, I don't typically sleeve, especially not for a game that, uh, you know, that is that doesn't have rarity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so for me, it's good to to make sure that I keep the game so that the game will hold up to players who play the way I play. Yeah, yeah. The friends that I play with are very rough on guards. Uh, like I have one, I have a couple, group, small group of friends. One, of them, they just they'll destroy cards if they're not in sleeves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my other friend Jeff is basically a perfectionist and wants everything to be sleeved. So that's why we end up just sleeving everything we get. Did you sleeve your Millennium Blades? They're in Penny Sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm considering all the people I've played with and we getting a group where we're playing like once a week. I'm considering asking them maybe getting donations and sleeves them all in clear <laughs> Dragon Shields. Because that, it's an expensive endeavor. Well, don't yeah. forget that Set Rotation is bringing like 450 more cards to the yeah. game. So I've got... That uh, yeah. my local store will give me a deal if I buy, like, an entire box of Dragon Shields. Like, mm -hmm. the full, like, 12-pack set. So. Yeah. Well, I, 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 rec I always recommend Ultra Pro, and we test with Ultra Pro. Mm -hmm. And I wrote to Ultra Pro, and I said, hey, send me a box of card sleeves, and I'll recommend you. And they did, and so now I recommend them. Um, <laughs> they sent me the, uh, the Pro Slayer, the Pro Slayer sleeves, and they do a very, they do a very good job for, for all of our games. And Definitely... All of our games are a size to fit them so specifically. I definitely I like I liked the Ultra Pro. I used them for uh, I used them for a while. I used them when I started Vanguard. The problem with them I had back then, what's had me stop getting them, is their little like Ultra Pro bubble sticker mm -hmm. uh, was always in the way. Yeah, um, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, it it can it can get in the way a little bit, but it, um, they've changed some. I of haven't them, sounds so. yeah I haven't yeah. felt so much trouble with it. Yeah. Like it used because like when it first started, it was right in the way. Like when I played Vanguard, it covered up what level it was. Mm -hmm. But when <laughs> Vanguard became more powerful, uh, more or not powerful, more popular, they moved stuff around. Okay, uh, uh, let's move on over to gameplay. Okay, <laughs> we've yeah, got to. We'll be here for forever. We got thirty minutes to do cover gameplay and characters, and we got characters to cover. All right, <laughs> that's true. But the the the, the characters is, are the fun part. But, it is. But, but I, I, I guess, yeah, do you want to give a quick gameplay? Yeah, I'll do a through? quick gameplay over there. Okay, so uh, the yeah, point of the game... We tutorial, so we don't have to say too much. Yeah. yeah, there's a tutorial video. You can go check it out on his Kickstarter. Uh, but the main point of the game is it plays on a board like Battlecon where you can move stuff around, and you have an action, and it even comes with a little handy little rules reference. Uh, it comes with it, each stack, uh, where you have a set number of actions you could do in a turn. Where you do one of them, then you draw a card. So you can either draw two cards for the turn. Uh, you can discard cards from your hands to move on the board. Or discard from your gauge, which is where attacks go and they deal damage. Uh, every card has an attack side and a boost side. Boosts are either like instantaneous effects or like enchantments that sit around until you attack. They like draw you extra cards, do other things. Yeah. Uh, you can yes. discard and draw a better hand just to dig. Or you can spend your gauge to go exceed mode, which is where you get to become super, super shiny. And you yeah, get we, a better We built this, this game around like the, the kind of ebb and flow of two-player combat. It should feel really familiar to players who play like UFS or Hearthstone or Magic. Mm -hmm. um, you, have a, you have a deck of cards, you have a hand, you take a turn, the opponent takes a turn, you go back and forth. At some points, you will have this clash where you both play cards. Um, it's got sort of this nice ebb and flow to it where each action you take is either going to move you towards winning the game, it's going to improve your board position, it's going to improve your hand position, and, um, and, and, um, or it's going to improve your ability to score those, those hits, the payoff for your, for your actual attacks. Mm -hmm. And, um, and each one of those things, each move that you take gives the priority to your opponent to kind of either counter that move or say say I don't care I can beat you anyway and press forward with their attack. And so you kind of you kind of you know you build up your attacks, you move into the position you want, you jockey with your opponent for a bit, you do footsies, and then at some point one of you says, 
I think I got this. And you play your card down. And then we see who actually has the, uh, has the right move for the situation. We're, and, uh, we're crazy. Our first two games, we were attacking on like the first turn. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> like, like honestly, like when you when you start out, you you start to attack a lot, and then once you get a little bit better, you start to move more, and then like kind of the 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 you know medium high level play is when you start looking at your boosts and you start saying, oh, I can I can use you know this special action. So each card has an attack on the top and a special action on the bottom called a boost, and the the boost actions will let you do things more economically. Like you move around faster. You can control the cards in your hand or your opponent's hand. You can get special bonuses when you attack, or you can even <laughs> force your opponent to attack with a card that you name. Um, and that's what we we would say probably is the most powerful one is the, the focus boost, which lets you call out an attack and force your opponent to play it against you. That can be, that can be really game changing. When you uh, when you get it to the table, or when you get to when you manage to land one of those, although it can really hurt when you miss it too, because you don't find out whether your opponent's played the move you called until after you do your own attack. So, bit of a uh, of a uh, you know of an all in sort of move. Um, but anyway, there's lots of tactics, and as you get better at the character, you start to look at the boost and you start to discover more emergent gameplay through the different boosts you can do. So there's a lot of levels of skill, even though you're not customizing your deck. There's a lot of emergent gameplay and discovery that you get even by playing the same match and by playing the same characters over and over. Yeah, it definitely feels like with some of the characters, like there are different ways you can go about playing them. Like you could, ex I, it felt like to me like there are certain attacks where you could exclusively use the boosts on those and attack with the others, and, or vice versa, and allow you to like to have different styles of character. Mm -hmm. Like I could see Ulrich uh, just playing like an all ranged version of him with a bunch of his stuff. Yeah, it's it's true. He's got a lot of good range boosts, and he has the mobility to stay out of your opponent's, you know, out of your opponent's melee, um, which which is really important. Um, you know, not every not a lot of people can catch up to him. Yeah. And just to give people a brief overview of the cards, um, I have on the screen uh, some of the normal attacks that we were talking about. Uh, there's eight of them, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's eight of them. You get two of each. Like, uh, they're all generic things. Every single deck gets them. Um, and then each character has their own uh, five unique uh, special, uh, special yeah, attacks. Yeah, special attacks and then two unique ultra attacks. Yeah. And the... Uh, Ultras are foil. Yeah, the normals are, are something neat to talk about because we actually modeled these after Street Fighter um, and specifically looking at uh, Third Strike. Um, the The way that the attacks kind of curve is that your close range attacks are very fast, and then your medium range attacks give you a little more utility in how you're going to move or defend yourself. And then um, as the longer the range on attack gets, the slower and the more, but also the more powerful it becomes. So the more the more all in you can go on doing an attack. Um, and then really the ranges kind of come back that. in, and you have a defensive set of, of styles that are that will counter your longer range attacks or counter your, you know, your engage type attacks. See, I figured there was something to this. I just couldn't put my finger on it. But now that you say third strike is an avid player of third strike, that makes so much more sense. You see, we have I... we have one. We have a boost called parry. You could parry in this game. It's yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I did that. I it was to... parry into uh, parry into ultra. Mm -hmm. Just I like need to make sure to talk third about strike, this parry into hyperbomb. <laughs> I needed to make sure to talk about this with a lot of my like big fighting game friends that are big in the fighting game community. Uh, show him this. That sounds he would really appeal to him a lot. Like, oh yeah, just hearing that sentence. Just mention third strike. It's like the it's like the promised land of, of fighting games. Oh man, I think I think it was a game that was before its time. Yeah. yeah. That it still it still gets played heavily today, even my circle too. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Street Fighter will canonically come after that point. <laughs> <laughs> at some right. at some point, we'll get back all these characters. Right. Let's talk about speaking of all these characters. Let's talk about them again. Let's talk about the ones for this game. All right. Nope. So set one is the set that I was given, which is. Now, on the back, do we know what's set? Because it says round one, round two, round three, round four, or no, they, they all say they also round one fight. Okay. Um, 
the the UPC <laughs> code on the side, or rather, I guess the ISBN code on the side tells you what box it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that is box can... one, and that's the one that'll come out in June. Okay. So, guys, I don't know how well you can see this. Uh, this is your box one. This is Vincent and Vincent Gray and Natali uh, versus Heidi and Reese. Uh, I'll just read from the back of the box. Uh, Reese is a member of Secret Order's uh, sworn order to defend the world from evil. Uh, Reese is a rushdown character. Uh, and then he will eventually outpace his, uh, the opponent uh, with uh, attack strikes and card advantage. Uh, some ad lib there, but you know. Uh, Heidi's a mechanical genius who fights on her own with the help of her giant robot. Uh, you can power up to get her way to victory, meaning uh, she uh, has an abil onboard ability of whenever you boost, which is a mechanic in the game. You get to draw a card upon the boost uh, resolution. So yeah, you're being she those cards. utility actions at the bottom of the card. And even more of tempo advantage. Yeah. And uh, she is one of the characters that is actually very versatile. She's actually good at almost any range on the board. She's not restricted to anywhere. So you can uh, be able to hit no matter where you are. Uh, Vincent is the sinister president of the United States. I will not make any Trump jokes, people. Uh, Vincent utilizes uh, high-tech power armor and psychic inside to control the battle. Uh, Vincent, in all terms of uh, games, he is like your Zangief. Uh, he is like your. Um... That's fine. I think of him more as like a like a, a T Hawk sort of character, you know, yeah. block and counter. Not so much the the engaged throws like Zangief, but. Now that's a gabbard, but I'm yeah. thinking like Iron Zangief, where Zangief's new ability buffs him out real quick. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does feel a lot like Five Street Fighter Five Zangief. So uh, Vincent is a tank character. So uh, they think they've got you, and then he just tanks right out of that hit, and then just drills you right back. Uh, then we got Natali, who is a diabolic emissary from the world beyond. Natali corrupts our her foes with false gifts of power and then uses against them. Uh, Natali is a very interesting character. Uh, she provides bonuses for both herself and the opponent. Uh, however, she gets the better bonuses, so it's up to you to be able to maximize your profit over what they gain. And I believe, and I don't don't have too much experience with her, Brad, is she like Heidi where she's across the board or she's strictly range? Um, she she is powerful at, at multiple ranges, but she is most powerful at the like two to four range okay. uh, where the reach of that scythe is going to zone out most of your opponents. Okay. So I would say that she, she is the, the zoner for this set. Um, she has a lot of really cool tools. She has uh, this really fast poke that you can do. She has a lot of moves that get stronger the more gauge your opponent has. So if you start to give them, you know, more power and they don't use it right away, then you can punish them for holding on to it. Um, so it's very interesting technical character. I wouldn't say she's entirely a control, um, but uh, she has she adapts to the player and yes. uh, to the to the matchup. It's probably the most technical character in the box. So I actually got this uh, box, guys. I've had a lot of fun with it. I've had my friends play it with me. Uh, everybody got to play, uh, enjoy their time. Uh, the Reese character guy actually kind of just killed us, but he's been a Reese player since I introduced him to UFS, which War Red Horizon comes from. So he took the Reese's character very, very quickly. Like he had the play style down in like ten minutes. Yeah, we did a we did a lot of research to make sure that the uh, the exceed styles would match their Red Horizon styles. And so in the same way, when Heidi comes out in Red Horizon, you'll probably see, or in UFS, you'll probably see similarities to her character Good. from this. Awesome. Uh, um, Matt, you got the other boxes. Yep. Uh, just one thing I wanted to bring up, because uh, from what I said, so I, what I really like about this, uh, coming from a UFS player standpoint, is one, like character, there's characters like Heidi, where we get to see them now, because Red Horizon Blood Omen isn't out yet. So it's awesome we get to see these. But then also some of the other characters that we already have in UFS, some of them are not that strong. I was going to say like Gabrick, but he top-aided at the 2K today, so what do I know? 
Um, but some of them, they're not as strong in UFS, but they're very fun and very good in this game. Yes. So if you had a, like, pet favorite card, uh, character card that you liked in uh, the Red Horizon sets, you can play them over here and they're going to be pretty good. And they mirror this stuff very well. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my favorite character out of all the decks we played first, which is Ulrich, which I brought up on the screen here. Yeah, so Ulrich, is, Ulrich was playable in UFS, but he didn't have a any support. And, yeah, he was just a problem. Yeah, and so the support, his support was drawn for this game um, and will then make it into Blood Omen later um, because of the, uh, you know, um, but we actually had requested a few specific pieces and created some new moves for him, specifically for Exceed. So we got to define a bit of his play style in this game, which was a lot of fun. Awesome. Like, I just, when I first got back in, QFS, when Jasco Games picked it up, um, it was, I think, like a year in or so when they uh, started Tides and some of these promos came out. I picked up Ulrich, and I was like, buff dude who shoots lightning. Gotta play this. And very awesome that when we got to uh, this game where I get to finally play him uh, with support, he plays very much my favorite style that I like to do in any games like this where he has a movement ability. Uh, like, his special effect is he can close or retreat a space and then attack. So he gets to do two actions at once. And, at once. and mobility is always, like, my favorite thing in these kind of games. Uh, I play a lot of Clive in Battlecon. Mm -hmm. Well, Clive, uh, Clive is just is just crazy. Like, you just have all these effects, and you're like, I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I'll do something, and I'll get somewhere by the end of it. No. Nah, I'm, I'm a prick. You play, I know exactly you play where I'm going. Clive. Yeah. See, because I like you, you lay down like five modules, and then you've got like six movement effects stacked up, and it's just like, okay, I'm going to move forward. No, back. No, the rocket boots. Oh, no. I punched him, and now we're both flying across the screen. But then I get to fly back off the wall. What happened? That's that's my typical impression of Clive. I use him to just set people wherever I want them and always put me out of range of stuff. Uh, like, I just activate the modules that are best against each opponent, like if they're close in or a ranged fighter. Mm -hmm. And then once I get the ones that I want active that are the most relevant, I'll just start gaining back a life every turn. You see, I'm, I'm always too tempted by river. wrench to just, just get up to, like, five or six modules and blow it all out. But Yeah, like, I'll, I'll turn on, like, one or two extra ones when I'm ready to go in for the kill, yeah. but... There are, there are Battlecon characters that I'm just not good at playing, because I don't get this playstyle for it. And that's true of Exceed, too. I've... I've you know, a lot of times there are there are a lot of characters in Exceed that aren't my favorite, but people yeah. in our play group enjoy them, and there are like established archetypes that people like, and so I try to make sure to include those. Um, yeah. You know, it's just so it's somebody will have fun with it, somebody will enjoy yeah. that character type. Like, yeah, I think the biggest thing, especially with this game, uh, is it's more. I don't think any characters inherently weak of the ones we played, but it's all dependent upon uh, play style. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, you find the character that fits your mindset. Like, Jeff played Lily, who her ability is she makes all her normals plus one range, and she can retreat for free for uh, one space. Or, well, it costs her one less. One less. So she moves one, it's free, and two, it's cost one, and three, it costs two, etc. Um, like, Jeff played her first and thought she was awful. Awful, awful. What? Awful. She's so strong. That's And th then Jeff or uh, my friend Ben played her and just destroyed both of us with her. Yeah, she's she's um, great. I was uh, and they they both think that Zoe's uh, weak. But oh man, I, I know Zoe. I know Zoe's well. kind of so so Zoe is weaker than the other characters and and but I, she can do an infinite in certain. Yeah, situations. so so we we got you know I read the UFS cards for Zoe and my immediate my immediate response was oh this is that spammer character that just throws the tokens from across the screen and so we made. A, we made her a, a, a dedicated spammer, and she's got this kind of medium fireball that's just, you know, this the, her boomerang, her boomerang weapon, and it just it just hits you for a little bit of damage at a, a little bit faster than everything else at that range, and then it comes back, and she can do it again, and she can keep doing that until you make her stop, and um, but it's really nasty is when she does it with like sweep or spike or something that is you know really hard to deal with because mm -hmm. then the uh it, it can get really crazy um because she can do she can do a lot of damage on a very viable move very fast and it can be difficult for your opponent to get away 
And her ultra is she has the spammable Tsunami Slicer Ultra that self powers itself to continually run. So if you have like five points of gauge, you can do like three Tsunami Slicers back to back and really ruin your opponent's day. Yeah. That's what I kept on trying to do. I think I was not doing well with her because I was too obvious about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Also, leading up to getting these boxes in the mail, I just constantly talked about the Zoe deck. So all my friends <laughs> knew how to play her and probably already knew what I was going to try and do. Well, so. It's certainly it's certainly a fun deck, one I enjoy a lot. That um, um, I was I was happy with the new characters that we were able to do, and I was happy with the uh, the old characters we were able to bring some life into. Like uh, I yeah. I actually really liked Satoshi. I've uh, actually in post release I've played more Satoshi than any other character. Really? Yeah. Like I need to play some more of him because he's one of my favorite Red Rising characters in general, and I play him in UFS a lot. Mm -hmm. His um, he's he's fun, but his like his ability looks really bad on paper. It's like. It's like Ulrich, except he gets like plus two power when he initiates, and only if he has more cards than the opponent. So it's really hard to proc. But you like basically you rush your opponent down into a corner, and then you proc it like three times, and they're dead. You just you just do that one combo and kill them, kind of like Reese. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a lot. He's very similar to that style of rushdown play, but he does it a bit differently than Reese because he has a lot of engage and withdraw type attacks and a lot of disruption. Um, as opposed, he has like an eight speed move or something like that. He has he has a nine speed, um, yeah, like a super. It's a super, and it costs it costs him one gauge. But basically, he just throws sand at you, and it ignores your guard, and it gives him advantage. So if so, if you if he runs in, you know, and you try your most viable move against him first, he's just like dust, and then he can keep going with his combo. So it lets him it lets him bait out your best move in a combo, which uh, is a really powerful tool in his kit. Uh, another one that the other t ones that come in his deck, uh, we actually didn't get to really try that much. Uh, Mei Lien. Yeah, Mei Lien's the uh, one that we got to design for this set. Yeah, um, she's similar. Like um, in UFS, uh, her one promo that she had was you revealed. Uh, if you revealed your uh, two cards in your hand, if they were the same attack, you added five damage. Mm -hmm. She has something similar where it's like, if you have a copy of the attack already somewhere else, like if the attack you're playing, there's another one in your discard pile, it gets plus one range. Yeah, this is and... this was based more on her character card than her um, than than any of the support that she had previously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think she had any support. I think she was a. It was just like one. Just it was promo. one action, yeah. I think. She has like one action and one promo. Yeah. yeah. So, but her promo was like a discard manipulation promo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's actually like 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 four characters that I didn't get to make, and I might go back and make an extra box later on in the future with uh, Alara and uh, Sebastian and um, Sasha and um, and Skullman, but uh, maybe some. That. Huh. Be down for that. Yeah. Those are pretty popular characters. My, uh, one of my friends, he uh, loves Alhara and Zyreth, the angels. Mm -hmm. He was so upset when the Kickstarter just barely didn't make it for them. Yeah, I was. I really wanted to do them too. Like they, Cause... they switch forms between Alara and Zyreth, and so you can mm -hmm. start with either of them. And they like Miska, where you have that extra card for the dog. Um, they have an extra card for which form they're in, and then when you exceed, you go like to to Omniel. And your exceed wears off after like a short amount of time. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, he had the problem of it's like I want to back this, but only if I get the angels. Oh, so he should have. We only needed like thirty people, and we would have gotten them. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, Sebastian was my favorite. But Sebastian was actually a dredge deck, like Max the Gathering style. Oh God. <laughs> That's that's a little bit too good. You said the word dread. <laughs> like so, he he can spend his discard pile. He can ex he can seal cards from his discard pile to get force and gauge. So he never actually oh. has to spend cards from his hand. And he can do supers like he can do a super on turn two by ditching his first hand and drawing into another one. And then he can like spend all his discard pile to power the super. That's do it now. I want to play it. <laughs> so he was he was pretty fun. He didn't have any art though, and Jason was like, "Yeah, he might get into Blood Omen. We're not going to invest in art." So I uh, I didn't I so I wasn't able to do him. But uh, well, I can bring I'll bring to the do that character. 
do that character for someone else in a future season. Just make that yeah. design. Uh, I certainly will. It was a lot of fun. A lot of I fun. like playing Dredge, but I also get called a miserable person every time. As I try long as you Dredge. don't make a character based off slivers, we're good. <laughs> You know, I thought I kind of feel like Ava is the sliver character in this game. Yeah, we were talking about that uh, before the show. So, why is it that she's akin to that of cancer? She's she, she, so she's uh, so they say Ava is this 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 cancerous character. My game group hates her, and she was my main in the uh, the playtest. Um, and so so what she does is she, all of her all of her special moves have boosts on them that get powerful over time. It's like at the start of each of your opponent's turns, do this. Like get one range, get one power, draw an extra card, get a gauge, you know, um, get more armor. They all they all grow. And so Ava doesn't actually like attack you. She just like does a boost and then gets stronger. And if you don't attack her that turn, she'll get another one. And then she'll start stacking all these high power boosts onto herself and get, you know, this really ridiculous uh, like level layer of uh, of armor and power and range such that she could just you know do like do one giant sweep against you um so she's very a very dangerous um character to leave down and so she she never tends she tends to never start an attack all she will do is wait for you to attack her and so it's a very passive style of gameplay and it's a very different style of gameplay um and that uh and that was sort of what we we wanted to capture from her UFS is that she was kind of like you'd like build 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 and then you'd do a reversal and kill the opponent in one go with this giant reversal combo, um, and that was sort of how I I saw her play out in UFS and what I wanted to capture. Um, the it's, it's funny because her new promo one mm -hmm. uh, is this really weird thing where people she does is she uh, exiles eight cards from your deck mm -hmm. to give your attacks plus two speed plus two damage. So people are making like this hundred card monstrosity decks huh. and just trying to just go off on her with turn turn two with their new promo. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Hmm. But, that could be an interesting character design too with uh, with these sets. I don't know. I hope I get to re revisit Red Horizon once they have you know like eight more characters. I can do a second season with it because I've really enjoyed you know bringing these guys to life and exceed. It's been it's been an, it's been neat to translate the mechanics of one game into another. I, yeah, that's I, why I definitely I, like. I goes, my favorite thing in design is uh, top-down design, like just taking something, the flavor of something, or the mechanics of something already existed, and then translating that into the game. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I really like, like just taking stuff from another license and transferring it over. Yeah, which is why I like both this and the Indian Two FS set so much. Uh, I'm 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 still waiting on my U Indian Two FS, but I'm excited to to see it. I've seen all the cards already, so. Oh, okay. I was about to say God. we can show you all the cards. Oh, I've, I've approved. I approved all the cards for press, so I know. Yeah. I know what they are. I just want the physical slips of paper so that I can challenge my friends with with Kajath and Schechter. It's gotten really good reviews from some of the higher ups in the community. So yeah. the set's been very, very well done and well received. I'll probably, and though I don't have a community in my area anymore, I'm still going to tell my shop, "Hey, give me a rack of it." Like you could just easily just take the decks and mix them together and just have four ending decks to play against each other with friends. Oh yeah. Like that's what I'm going to be doing with all the extra copies. And I guess stuff that's, I get. that's I'm just gonna make decks. Yeah, when you buy the the brick, you get two of each deck yeah. anyway, so it, it works yeah. out yeah. just fine. Well, how I are mean, the how are the rares though? How are the 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 extra the random pack ends? Uh, you um, get one rack and you get everything. Okay, yeah. that's what I was gonna bring up for any level ninety nine fans that were watching this. Um. If you just buy a full box of all the decks, uh, I've heard from like six people that have opened a full uh, brick so far, and they've gotten four X of every single rare. Really? Okay. Hmm. So yeah, I, just I, I done pretty remember well. talking with Jason about that and saying that you know that our fans would want to be you know like get a full a box style purchase to get into it. So perhaps he took that to heart and packed it that way. Like there, there are there are eighteen randomized rares mm -hmm. per deck. Uh, but it's been, it seems that if you buy a full brick, they're set for you to get, uh, four X of everything. And then you'll have six rares. We have a fifth copy of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's cool. That's very cool. Okay. So my question is, and we know we can't answer this, but we always have to ask these questions. What's season mm -hmm. two? Uh, you know, I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish I could say on air what season two is, but 
negotiations are ongoing, and uh, it's been it's been a long it's been a long trek. Um, yep. I will say this: we have negotiated so, with, so with Star Trek. Yeah, a Star Trek. <laughs> uh, you, hey, you, you you laugh, but we have we have negotiated five different seasons, and we're now trying to talk to our fifth sponsor, and because each one, for some different reason, has said no, we don't want to do this next year. So I'm now negotiating with our fifth sponsor. <laughs> I'm on season season five, and for each one of these licenses, I've made a full set of sixteen characters to show them what it would look like. Oh wow! So I've got a backlog of like seventy, you know, seventy-two exceed characters. All I got to do oh, wow. is you know find a license to stick one of them on. Um, I'm thinking more and more about original properties at this point, though. That's so, that's the truth of it. Okay, so that leads to my next question: What property would you really want in Exceed? I mean, not ones that you've already negotiated with, and whatnot. What's a specific property that you would really enjoy bringing into Exceed? Hmm. Hmm. You know, it's uh probably probably one that I think would do really well. Um, would be my favorite fighting game from recent memory, which was um, Undernight uh from the uh from arc system works and they're notoriously hard to work with so i don't think that's actually going to happen under but it's under night in birth is the new i have heard of it it's the new uh fighter from french bread they did melty blood uh, a couple years oh, ago okay they're the melty blood it's people. it's a really it's a really smooth uh really really tight um 2d fighter um it's got a lot of aerial dynamics to it a lot of nice uh you know nice uh core mechanic options um and it just plays really smoothly and um you know the characters have have strong archetypes and they have you know these big huge hit boxes that are appropriately balanced with how long their cooldowns are so you can play a very you play every character effectively at most ranges i'm looking um, at the character select screen shot i could definitely it's, see it's these pretty anime tastic i know yeah <laughs> Anyone who's watched any of my other videos where we talk about licensing should know that my favorite thing I would want to bring in is Ruby. But uh, we got Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue. Now. Be nice. Are there are there sixteen characters now in Ruby? There's oh, beyond easily. sixteen characters now. Oh, okay. There they start off with eight, eight character eight core character good guys. Eight no, there, there's eight char two character two main teams that could be good guys. And then there's like a full team of bad guys that they could use. Hmm. Uh, so there's 12 very definite characters you could pull from. Well, now we got Team Coffee too. So there's uh, yeah. three teams of good guys, three teams of bad guys. You got the season three of the tournament arc. So that gives you. Yeah. There's well, a bunch of random side characters you can use. Yeah. So. Uh, well, if anybody wants to, if anybody knows the guys who are on Ruby and want to put me in touch, I'd be happy to talk to them about it. So. All right. Team Rooster Teeth. All you gotta do. Oh no. Uh, See, the two properties I would really want in this is Skullgirls. Mm -hmm. And it's more mainstream, but Tekken, because I can see Tekken being very popular in this format. Since Tekken is a very uh, move centric uh, fighting game. Well, I did send my, my, uh, my, you know, my inquiry sheet to Namco. So, uh, you know, or it's even, only been a few months. Maybe they'll still get back to me. In anime. <laughs> Uh, One Piece would be great in this. Mm -hmm. I have an idea for One Piece. They don't. They don't. There's I'll no One Piece that. card game on the market, so it'd certainly be there, something that's available. There is one in Japan. Yeah, I believe. Uh, that's always the weird thing I've tried to figure out with licensing. Licensing games versus Japan and the U.S. Mm -hmm. Well, you you license by territory, so we yeah. just say we want the North America card game rights, you know, or North America and Europe card game rights. Yeah, and and that's what we negotiate for, and then we're just yeah. not allowed to sell to the Japanese distributors. Yeah, and that's just, that's something that's not too hard to to do. Yeah, it's what uh Weisschwartz is what makes it aw awkward. Yeah, yeah, and I've I've had a couple of licenses that I've talked to, and they've said, "Oh, well, we already have a card game," and I'm like, "What, really?" And they're like, "Yeah, look, Weisschwartz did it, and it's like a Weisschwartz expansion block." Yeah. And I'm like, "No, no, no, that's like one expansion in their game." You you know we that doesn't that doesn't prevent you from doing anything else ever. But yeah, that's there's a lot of Japanese companies like like that it seems. Yeah, well, White Shards is pretty big over there, but it's it's yeah. not a game. I f at least I feel it's not a game a lot of people play. I feel it's a game that's more about being collected. Yeah, played. It's a bit. It's a bit of both. It's it, it's a really hard for me to gauge because uh, the like the big Japanese 
distributor for yeah. the U.S. is right down the street from me. Ah, okay. So I have no idea what this game is like in the U.S. Oh. But, um... Wait, you have Bushi Road offices down the street from you? Uh, no. The guy who runs Heart of the Cards. The big translation and oh, okay. organized play. He runs organized play and actual distribution. Okay. Um... Tell him I need more mass police stuff for my dimension police. Back to exceed stuff. <laughs> we we talk about way too many awesome things. But, <laughs> no, it's it's um, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just want to like what what actually made you want to design exceed? Well, I, I think I've asked this before, but I don't remember if we actually touched on it. Well, I played a lot of I played a lot of BattleCon. Um, I, I designed BattleCon. Um, <laughs> and I I said I like this, but it is a a heavy game for serious gamers, for very tactical, analytic gamers, and I want to create a fighting card game that can be for where you can play um, more according to instinct. Because in BattleCon, you your play is very is very dictated by the opponent's play. You have to be constantly thinking about everything they can do to you. And, I definitely had us do twenty minute turns of staring at each other. Yeah, and it's it's real intense, and that's and that's the nature of the game, and that's fine. But I wanted to have an, a a game where you could play, you know, instinctively. You could play what your gut told you to play, what you felt like playing at that moment, and you could play um, actively instead of reactively. Um, to you know, entire you could play entirely actively almost. And so that's what I designed Exceed around was around proactive, proactive play, around um, you know, around being like fast turns, fast board development, fast interactions that don't have any you know any or much calculation behind them. Um, you can just you know you can you can anticipate your opponent and it will certainly make you stronger. But a lot of the game is about making the right choice for you, not necessarily making the right choice in terms of your opponent. Mm -hmm. Another good thing about Exceed is uh, also it is much easier to bring around as I pulled up my box having all the decks in it. Yeah, we designed it We designed it specifically so that you would carry it around in a deck in your pocket just like any other CCG or LCG. Um, I want it to be completely cards, no boards or tokens or anything like that. It would all be on the cards. So it's definitely, it, it came it's out definitely easy to carry around. Like I've just been bringing the box around anywhere I go uh, for the past couple weeks. It's, it's really always cool. in my car. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And it and... sounds like your car hasn't destroyed it yet, so that's good. Yeah. You know, I always, I always worry about my products out in the sun, how, how they're going to hold up, but it's good to hear that, uh, that that hasn't been an issue for you. No, it's been pretty much in the sun. It's in my passenger seat when I don't have friends in it on the weekend. The only issue I've had with any of your products is... BattleCon and all of its tokens. It's just it's hard for me to keep track. Token, of them tokens have been a little hard to something. track. And in the next in the future BattleCon games, um, which will be coming out in August, yeah. um, we are going to be switching from tokens to mini cards. So when your character has like four tokens, they'll get four of these little half size cards. You know that are like you know playing cards like this. They'll be like that big, and oh. um, and you can use those to track your tokens. And that way, you can keep a character in a you know, if you want to in a in a small box, uh, That's a question or in a small sleeve, and it's not going to be too difficult. Question for that, just as we get sidetracked, because that's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, are the size of them? Do you know if the cards are be like the size of the X Wing miniatures cards? Um, yeah, I think that that size that Fantasy Flight uses is an industry standard now. It's like that is that is awesome because that fifty percent because they make sleeves for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And we'll try and make it so it be used with the existing products out, that are out there. Yeah, because another game that I got into recently was not the correct size uh, for the smaller cards, so we couldn't sleeve those. Okay, well, we'll make sure that we that we size it right. Cool. All right. Do we have anything else before we wrap up? Um, unless you got any other stories you want to talk about. Oh. Most of my stories so far are just how I'm so happy Ulrich fits my play style. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear it, and I'm I'm curious what uh, what people are going to think about Belcor and Marathi and Heidi and um, and <clears throat> and Al or not uh, no Ulrich. Now that they all have full full now they have established styles through Exceed, mm -hmm. so I'm 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 going to be curious to hear the greater 
you know the greater response to these characters too. But uh, yeah. but I do need to go for now, so I uh, okay. have to say adieu. All right. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, go like our channel, Total Justice Gaming, on YouTube, and we also do a normal show on Twitch uh, every Thursday night, nine o'clock, and we stream a bunch of games on Tuesdays. And Brad, thank you so much again for joining us. I, we really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having game. me. Uh, I may like this more than the other one we talk about, but you know, we, we just don't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, there's, there's forward. always, there's always more fun things to come out. And that's, yep. I think that's, that's true of gaming in general. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can't have like a game forever. Really and so yeah. you, you, you do this for a few months, you do that for a few months, you know, you go back to this, you go back to that. I mean, you know, we, we all, we all live in phases and so yeah, there's we, no, no shame in having we, a, of your favorite change. Don't have to We've suffer. reached our uh, cycle where we're all ready to go back to BattleCon now. <laughs> like we played a lot of Millennium Blades, and I will save my stories of Millennium Blades for when we would do that recording. But uh, that game's really fun. We're ready to go back to BattleCon for a couple of weeks. All right. So look forward to our Millennium Blades video. That'll be going up sometime soon after this one, hopefully. Uh, and until then, we'll talk to you guys later. Yep. All right. I'll see you guys again for that. Go Blake Seeds, people!